Hello, my name is Emma. I'm an MPhil student at the University of Cambridge and I will be presenting my abstract to you, which is based off my third year undergrad dissertation in the Faculty of Education in Cambridge. Uh, so the argument I'd like to present today is that Paolo Freire's concept of a banking model and a problem posing model of education, banking as in entirely oppressive structures, problem posing entirely emancipatory structures, I think that this binary is a little bit too simplistic and can be better understood as a spectrum. Uh, so why is this? So using a cultural studies approach, uh, I decided to take a look at structures of education and individual teaching style using Harry Potter as a starting point. Harry Potter is a great series. It is largely focused on Harry's experiences in a very English seeming school. So it can offer a commentary or a space for dialogue about education in the UK. Um, and through this, I wanted to suggest that actually uh, this, uh, we see a spectrum of power in schools in real life. So how did I go about doing this? So we've got to, to analyze my teachers in Harry Potter. Um, I was looking at different factors that might play into resistance or conformity to wider, like overarching education structures, including theory versus practice in the classroom, active versus critical learning and formal versus progressive um, education styles. And I've got the definitions here for you. And below are some examples of how the Hogwarts teachers actually apply like these different factors, which sort of resist this idea that there's a very straightforward, oppressive or emancipatory system of education. I looked closely at Professor Binns, who is a very banking model style teacher, actually, uh, the, the extra factors that he incorporates are essentially just silence the class accidentally, he doesn't really notice that they're there. He's just teaching, he's just transmitting knowledge, essentially, and in this respect then shows that uh, teaching style can match the larger banking structure, because, oh, I forgot to add that essentially Hogwarts does seem to be functioning on a banking model of education because it's very much focused on summative end of year exams and transmitting knowledge. And so Professor Binns is actually conforming very nicely to this by transmitting knowledge in a very boring way. Uh, and then we have Professor Umbridge, who is the villain of book five. Uh, she chooses to teach theory instead of practice in a largely practical classroom, a practical subject. Uh, but more importantly than this, I feel, is that she actively silences her students throughout the entire book in the classroom and outside. She totally prevents student autonomy and voice from, from um, contributing to the class and this is very banking model in style so we see how her individual teaching methods match up to the larger system in which she's working however we also have professor lupin who is very dynamic he, te he teaches outside the classroom he takes his kids um, to the staff room for their first lesson he asks questions he encourages dialogue he teaches a mix of theory and practice he asks for criticality for his students but also for set knowledge um, so here we see that he's actually kind of working more on a problem posing level uh, because of these different factors that he's using, but we also have to recognize that he's still working in the Hogwarts structure that um, is prioritizing summative exams. He is still seen as a knowledgeable one in the classroom, and so these are banking characteristics. We're seeing a little bit of a merging of the two. And so this has led to my conclusion very briefly that individual teaching styles resist and support the educational structures in which they exist. And so the binary in practice may be more of a spectrum because the fact is that the different teaching uh, styles within the classroom, like Lupin has shown, can somewhat resist or, or challenge the larger model in which it's working. And in real life, this means that potentially even if um, a teacher is having to teach their students for passing exams, they can still shift their teaching style so that it still teaches criticality and still asks students to foreground their voices and find their autonomous identities. So I'll leave my conclusions with you here. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you for listening to my talk.